Hello and welcome to the AB Auto channel. So today I want to show you how you can LED mod your Xbox, your original Xbox. So if I turn it on, normally this ring here, it will just glow like a green colour, but I've modded it so there's two LEDs either side here and I've modded them so that I've got color changing LEDs on both sides so I'll show you on video you can see it's changing lots of different colors and also what else I've done is is I've put LED strips at the sides on both sides like this So you do, it doesn't have to be green, you can use any colour LED you want. So I'm going to turn off the console and I'm going to show you how to open it up. So unplug the connections at the back. Then turn it, it upside down and there's screw under here, screw under there, screw under there and there's a screw under here. And then there's also a screw under the label here but in my case it's clearly visible and then there's one of the label here so you will need a Torx bit for these um, so I can't remember off the top of my head what size Torx but I'll try a T20 so let's see yeah T20 is fine so a Torx 20 will be more than sufficient and then these long screws come out as you can see they're quite long just like on the on all the Xboxes really they all typically have the same but on the Xbox One S they have them in like a green colour so what I do is I just lift it up at the sides and then it allows you to take the screws out. If the adhesion does go on the bottom of those rubber feet, you can just use a bit of uh, super glue to put them back on, but they should just stay intact. I've done it a few times now and they've stayed intact. And then last screw here in the corner. Right, that's all the screws out. So now you flip it back up to the top and then it's just it's just gently pulling it up at the sides. Now then because I've got those LED strips in the side it makes it a bit more difficult to get it off but if you just keep Crying around like that it will eventually come off so there we go then this is the hard disk drive and this is the I believe it's a DVD drive on here so then there is a screw in there and here so what I do is I just get the ribbon cable out the way. Now then these are smaller torxes so you'll have to use a smaller torx for these. So let's see. Oh no that one's still too big. Uh, so if you're wondering I'm just using the um, iFixit toolkit for this. Uh, sorry about the background noise. Mm. So the, for these little screws inside, it is a, it's a Torx, it's a T8 for the little ones. 
Um, so sorry, there's just one here, and then there's then there's one inside down that hole, and then there's one inside there that you need to get out. It's a bit tricky to get into these ones here because there's not a lot of room but it's still still a T8 for them oh that one seems to be bigger so I'll try try a T9 for that one So, for some reason, this screw here requires a T9. Okay, so now we've got all the screws out. What you want to do is, is you want to first take the... So, as you can see, all this is loose now. So, first you want to take the this ribbon cable out the hard drive like that put it to the side then the power cable that feeds the hard drive you want to get it out like that and then this should just pull out so that's the hard drive out and then we take the disk drive out and be careful because it's still attached with two let me get you closer here so it's still attached with these this ribbon cable to the main board and then this yellow power cable so then that's out the way so now i will show you so they did different different versions of the xbox original xbox so Oh, that must have disconnected when I took it apart. So as you can see here, this is not the original fan. This is a, a much quieter fan. Because if you've got an original Xbox, you'll know how loud the original fan is. So this here is your... This one is the CPU, which used, a, I think it was an Intel Pentium 3 processor and it was clocked at around 733 megahertz and then here you've got your the gpu the it's an nvidia graphics processing chip and if you want to know how to change the thermal paste on these i'll do a i'll do another video to show you how to do that so you want to be very careful with this area here so even though you've disconnected the power this is this is your power board so 240 volts comes in through the back here and then you've got your forward rectifier and capacitors which convert that into the much lower safe voltages like 12 volt 3.3 volts etc and so if you want to modify if you want the led strips like i've done so as you can see i've just stuck one at the side here and then I've fed it through the hole in the case and then it goes through here and now what I've done is I've piggy banked off the power that goes into the main board here so obviously I've just connected the black cable to a negative and then a red cable you want to connect the red cables into this yellow one here because that that gives you 12 volts so when you buy your LED strips, you want to go for ones, and any 12 volt DC is fine. Um, don't get like a 3 volt or 6 volt or anything like that because it will be too much power for it and it, it might, might blow them all. So make sure you get a 12 volt strips, which you can just, these are easily, you can get these off eBay and Amazon. And I've done exactly the same on the other side. So as you can see, 
I've put one here. Now then, to modify the LEDs in here, what you need to do is, is you gently pull away, there's like two tabs at the side here at the front, and you want to gently pull this, so just here, just there, you want to just give that a little tug, like that, just, just gently pry it away with your fingers on both sides it can be a bit it can be a bit tough um, but it will uh, I don't know why <clears throat> whenever I do videos it never seems to go my my way um, but this this does pull off there we go and then once you've got that off like that, it's loose like this. There's a little, let me just zoom in for you. So see this uh, yellow connector here? You just unplug that and then you gently thread it through here. There's a hole in the front case. And then it just comes out through there. Okay, so now we have this front panel off here. Just zoom back out. So now you want to get this circuit board here. So what I do is get something like a flat-headed screwdriver, or you can, if you've got a iFixit kit, you can use this tool here. Use the blunt edge, and then there's two there's a tab there so there's a tab here and here and then there's one here okay so you want to gently pry this circuit board out yeah so because i've got it all covered in tape this this is just so that these connections don't short out on the metal casing. That's why I've put tape there, uh, because they kept shorting out and then the LEDs weren't working at all. So, uh, it's hard to see, but there's like a little plastic tab here. So you push that in like that. until it goes all the way in and then that should just pop out okay so when i flip it around you can now see that there's an led there an led there so originally it it has a led with three legs in either side but the cut these are color changing leds okay so they only have two legs so what you want to do is is you want to solder when you get uh, these and make sure that you get the th these are three millimeter leds because if you use the larger ones they just it, they won't fit back in so they have to be these smaller ones so as you can see here the the middle leg so what I've done is I've the anode side of the LED, which is um, it's if I if you look inside the LED, you can see there's like a there's like a yeah there's like a little slit. Okay, so the shorter side of this little metal piece you can see inside the LED that's going to be your anode. And the larger side of, of inside, that is your cathode. So the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. So I'll just put it the right way around for you. Okay. So what you do is, is because obviously you've got two, you've got two, two legs instead of three. So you just use the this the middle 
the middle pin the middle leg is the negative and then you use the down this one down here for your positive and then on this side it's exactly the same but you just put the positive at the top instead of the bottom okay so I will plug this in and show you so I'm going to plug this back in and you will see how they change colors so again just to make sure that when if you when you plug it in and it's open like this you don't want to keep have your hands anywhere around here because there's a there's a lot of high voltages going on uh, this tab so that so there's like that side faces away from you and then it goes back into this connector here oh this is fiddly uh, okay maybe maybe i've got it the wrong way yes so that's back in now so don't worry you can plug it in and touch this it's fine because there's only it's about three or five volts going into here so it won't cause you any problems um so just hold this while you plug the console back in and then obviously you've got your power and eject button here so press the power button and as you can see now the leds have started to glow uh, first they will glow like both the same color each but then af after a few moments you'll see that they'll start to alternate in different colors and uh, they look they look very very pretty um, and it just gives it a nice a nice effect to the ring okay so now I'm going to turn it back off turn the console back off okay so there we go unplug it again so what you want to do is is when you flip it upside down i've got i've got another one actually so i can show you a bit better so this is this is a this is a kit that i bought a while ago a spare one okay, if i just take this out So the, that, that's the reason why I've had to tape these up because these connections here, they kept going up against here and shorting the LEDs out. So this is what it, what it will look like before you mod it. So as you can see, there's three, three legs on each LED and because the color changing ones the reason why these have three legs is because these are what are called bicolor leds so obviously when the xbox is on they stay green and then if there's like a problem with the xbox they'll just stay red um so when you put color changing ones that's that changes it so it's very simple you just want to get some solder braid and your soldering iron and you just want to remove these leds and then you just put in your new ones like so like this so i'll put it yeah uh, just pull you just yeah pause the video and you can see what orientation that they go in if, if you get stuck um and then when you finish soldering those color changing leds in you just want to get some some just some insulation tape will be fine and then and then that's it uh, that that's how to modify those leds and then to put it back in you just get this just get this again and so you've got so you want to make sure it's the right way around so you look at the front and then so yep that's the the writing's the right way around the power and eject. So then all you do is 
it's easiest to slot the bottom bit in first like that. So there's like, as you can see, there's like gaps. There's like that gap there and that gap there. That's how you know where to slot it back in to, to these like so. So when you've got that bit in, then all you have to do is just gently push at the top till you hear it click. Okay, now it's seated back inside. So it's just a reverse of before. So you just put this back. There's like a hole in the case here. The connector just goes back through like that. And then the side on this connector that has these two little plastic prongs that goes away from you it back into the connector and then you just push that back in and then you just simply push at each side back until you hear it click like that then you've got this back on okay so that's the the power button led mod completed okay so because I'll just show you how to do, we'll just, I'll just show you how to replace the thermal paste, okay? So there's a tab here, and you just open it like that, and then you leave, you push this side, this, push this, well actually, it's quite hard to do it with your fingers, so it's easiest to get a tool like this, okay? And you just put it, against here and you pry it towards you uh, it's, it's, it's very fiddly this um, it just doesn't want to come out not want to come out for me either. <laughs> uh, um, ah there we go. So you just gotta you just gotta be patient and just pry it out. It's very be careful of these capacitors here. There we go. And then, if you've never changed a the thermal paste, this will be a nightmare to pull off. So what you'll have to do is get a hairdryer first, because the original thermal paste that uh, Microsoft used for these heat sinks is just a nightmare because it just like welds these heat sinks on. Uh, so if you've never changed a the thermal paste, get like a hairdryer and just heat up the heat sink uh -huh. until they get nice and hot and obviously watch your fingers you don't burn yourself so use some gloves and then it will just pry off then okay so as you can see here there's already a fresh thermal paste on there um, but I'll clean all that off so I think I actually put way too much on there, <laughs> as you can see. Um, so what I'm going to use, if you if you've never if you've never replaced the thermal paste before, and it's got the original thermal paste on, it will it it's a nightmare to get it off because it's like a pinkish uh, paste and it goes absolutely rock hard, like like super glue. And uh, isopropyl alcohol will just not cut the, will just not do it. So it's best if you purchase. Um, it's called um, Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remo Remover. Um, so what you do is you put, you'd use this, 
and this would this gets it off very easily um, yes and then you just use this afterwards but I don't need to use these but so yeah there you go if you've never done it before and you've got the original thermal paste on there I'd recommend buying these because that'll get it off in a matter of seconds but today I'm just going to use some good old isopropyl alcohol um, it's best to get the 99.9% um, and then you just get some cotton buds right you'll 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 need a few okay and then first i want to do the heat sink one so i just want to get all this off it's actually very wet still this and just want to get all this off okay so it's coming off very easy for me because it's still it's still quite wet this and uh, it's actually good to you it's good if you've just got a bit of tissue paper as well which um I wasn't prepared enough to get <laughs> um, so I just have to use some q-tips um, but yeah you can just use some tissue if it's if, it, if it's still wet thermal paste like this you want this surface to be very clean so I'm just gonna get some tissue Just to get all this residue off there. So now it's nice, nice and clean. So you want the surface to look like that, nice and clean. Okay. And then we're going to do the exactly the same to the CPU itself. So get some rubbing alcohol. And then we just want to get it all off here. Oh, it's very sticky this. Because it's it because it wasn't long ago when I replaced the thermal paste on there, so that's why it's still quite nice and wet. And then again, just to get the rest of it off, I'm going to use a bit of tissue. Now then, you don't need to put rubbing alcohol on the tissue paper just to get this off. Okay. So, as you can see now, zoom in for you. So, you want that, you want that, so if you want this chip to be nice and clean so get one more q-tip a bit of IPA and then you just want that nice and clean you want this surface to be nice and shiny so because this is a very small surface area you don't need you don't need a lot of thermal paste at all and then I'm gonna get some tissue and then just dry this bit off you don't have to dry it off you can just wait about 10 minutes and let it uh, it just dries itself because the IPA it's, it evaporates very quickly okay so now I've got that nice and clean. This is when you apply your new thermal paste. So there's lots and lots of different thermal pastes out there. Um, the, a very good one 
that I use is the MX, the MX5 or the MX4. Um, so I have some MX6. This is this this is probably the best one to get, but um, it's probably overkill for an Xbox. So any any thermal compound will do. Um, so this one, this one comes with a kit, so you get like these wipes with it. So you can use the wipes instead of the rubbing alcohol, but I just, I just warn you now that these give off a very, very strong, um, very strong odor when when you've opened one of these. So if you're going to use one of these wipes, I suggest that you leave your your windows open for a while, be, and the smell, it. It's not a it's not a horrible smell but um it lingers on for ages and ages and ages so that's why I just used a bit of uh rubbing alcohol instead um, so I'm just going to use this thermal compound instead um it's not a very good one but it's it's fine for the for the Xbox So, so I'm just going to literally put a very small amount on. See a bit of paste down there. So you literally just want to put on like about that much. Okay. That's all you need, just a little, little, tiny pea size amount. That is all you need. Because when you put the heat sink back on, it spreads that out into a nice thin layer. And that's all it needs is a very, very thin layer. So then all we do now is we just place the heat sink back on top like that. Okay. And then you get your clip like this. Then you slot it down like so. And then there's like two little two little clips either side that you push that into. Oh I've got it I've got it the wrong way around. Okay, so it needs to be needs to be facing you. So like that needs to go down towards you like that. So first do the back until you feel it slot in and then you push down at the front like that until you can feel it's clipped in. And then we and then all you do is you just gently push that back down until it stops. And then that's, it's nicely secured now. So that, and then the, the you do the exactly the same procedure for this side. Okay, so this one's a bit easier to get off because the clamp's just a lot easier to get off. And then it's exactly the same, you, you know, to get the thermal paste off, put some new on. So that is it, guys. Uh, that's how to LED mod your X, original Xbox and how to replace the thermal paste. And uh, just to remind you that when you get your positive and your negative leads from the LED strip... So as you can see, it comes into here and then the positive side goes into the yellow uh, slot on here. I've just pushed them in, uh, that's all you need to do. And then I've connected the negative cables to the negative here. And then putting it back together is exactly the same as taking it apart. And um, that's how you do it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video guys um, it would really help me out if you could subscribe to my channel as I'm uh, quite new on YouTube um, I will be doing more car repair videos um, obviously wh um, when when I have things that I need to do on the car um, so it will be uh, oil oil change next uh, that I'll probably be doing in the next couple of weeks time maybe September time um, so yeah 
Um, if you enjoyed the video, can you give me a thumbs up? It really helps me out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Enjoy your day. Goodbye.